That's not how me a demon talks. <laughs> me <Mere> demon. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Popcorn Bucket List. Uh, let's just say, uh, looking at the news here recently, Barbie is going to be able to buy a much bigger and better dream ooh, house. Ooh, very good. It looks like. Uh, that's that's a little bit of a tease, kind of, of uh, next week's topic. Yes. I kind of last minute thought of it today. Unfortunately, it's not going to work today. But uh, tune in next week. Figure out what exactly ooh, what I'm talking about there. Um, but uh, pretty historic day. Let's just talk yeah. about that for a second. Barbie hit $1 billion in the global box office. Greta Gerwig, first ever female director to hit this milestone. This Huge. is pretty big. This is a pretty big deal. It is. It is a big deal. And with a uh, uh, Barbie of all movies. Yeah, that, you know what I mean. Like, I mean, it's not too it's much. It's a of Mattel a toy. I know, but I mean, we've seen toys do good. Lego That's movie true. did good. Did I, it hit the billion mark though. Uh, maybe the first one did. Okay, I have to look into Super that. Super Mario though. did, I guess too. So. Yeah, second movie yeah. this uh, year hit the billion yeah. dollar mark. Only uh, two, I believe, so far this and year. And Oppenheimer's on the way. I think they actually <laughs> slow just crossed, and steady. I think they the just crossed the five hundred million yeah. mark. I think slow they just and that. steady wins yep. the race. Uh, took them a couple, baby. Took them a couple years to build the bomb. It'll yep. only take them a couple years to hit a billion. <laughs> yep. There we go. Um, so you're probably wondering about the drawing for our hundredth episode. I messed up a little bit. I was I, I forgot to uh, get. Uh, the the slips uh, I I I, for, I wasn't prepared I wasn't prepared so we're gonna give you guys uh, one more or a few more days here I guess depending on you know what just just still comment and we'll maybe still yep. put you in here if if you're new to everything. we will we, yeah, will we will still we will. put you in here if you and, comment uh, so. and uh, you'll be still eligible to be added to the drawing just in case you need a reminder comment on the YouTube video here uh, whatever you want as long as it's appropriate and everything. Yep. Head on over to all of our social medias for the channel. We've got a Facebook, we've got a Threads account, an Instagram account, as well as a TikTok. Comment anything you want down there, and yep. you will be uh, put into that drawing. As what are they? What's the drawing for again? Let's remind them here. In the celebration of 100 episodes, you get a $100 gift card to the Marshall Six Theater. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't need that, that's a pretty good Christmas present. That's a great That's Christmas a check present. mark off the to-do list yep. right here. And how cool Parents, would it be to get some Christmas shopping off your list in August? Awesome. How ahead of schedule would you be then? <laughs> and also, how awesome of an aunt, of an uncle would you be, of any sort of relative? Give that to your kid for Christmas or whatever. That's, I don't believe they expire or anything. So no. It's, no. You know, use it whenever. You got it until you, you, yeah, you got it. As long so, as you got it, you got it. Profit off of my mistake, my disorganization. We're going to give you a little bit of an extra chance here yes. to uh, get involved in that. But let's move into the actual episode here today. Opening spotlight. We're going to be talking about movies that maybe won't be wouldn't be made today. Yes, we're doing this in celebration of Tropic Thunder. It's fifteenth anniversary uh, this weekend. I believe it premiered August. 13th, I believe Something is like the day. Yeah. So this weekend will be the 15th anniversary of it. It's uh, It has garnered some criticism or controversy, but not during the time period you would think. Yeah. It, it got away with it back in the day. It it's got totally away from it. And I think, okay, we'll get, we'll get, we'll keep and, getting into and it. Then, and then, yeah, it didn't like, people didn't like get mad at it till a couple of years ago, which yeah. like, come on, there's a... Feels like there's a statute of limitations yeah, it's, there. On it's that, been but. ten years, fifteen years since this happened, and now we're getting yeah uppity about it. I don't but okay, but here's the real argument, I think, especially for Tropic Thunder. We'll talk about some other movies here in a little bit, but I, I want to specifically talk about Tropic Thunder. Satire is such a complicated word to describe and define, I feel like, especially mm -hmm. in storytelling. And that's the main argument for this movie. For those of you who don't know. Robert Downey Jr. A does a thing. Fantastic actor, by the way. Uh, he does a thing in this movie that would be considered bad. Mm -hmm. Is considered bad. Is considered bad. That's the... It, it sounds like I'm moving in a cop out here. That's the point. That's mm -hmm. the joke. The fact that some actors go way too far. 
and push the lines too far. That's what he's doing in this movie. That's what he's making fun of. Yep. He's making fun of those people. That's always been the argument that Ben Stiller, guy who uh, wrote, directed, and starred in this movie, has always kind of mm-hmm. said. And that, I feel like, is the argument that can't be used in other instances when actors have done this in yeah. Hollywood and everything. He's making fun of that. Yeah. And I think th- I think it's it's hard to explain unless you've actually watched the film and, like, picked up on what they're trying to say about this mm-hmm. or what they're trying to say about that because they do a fantastic job in the movie. I think they do it really well, and that's why it worked, and that's why I think at the time people were like, oh, that character, this, 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 and it worked. Whereas if you had maybe a subpar movie or those um, those uh, ideas that Ben Stiller is trying to get across to the audience, if you couldn't pick up on them or he didn't do it well enough, you would have thought, okay, this was terrible. This was really bad. It, and I, I love the point you brought up there where if it was a subpar movie, that is also a huge gamble. Mm-hmm. Because if it's funny, we give it a pass. If it's not funny, we don't give it a pass. Yep. I don't know if that's necessarily fair or not, but again, I think we're arguing for Tropic Thunder here because, again, they are making fun of that whole aspect and everything. It's also worth mentioning, and I don't know how much of this was a factor, Iron Man had come out just a few months prior to this movie. Yep. So Robert Johnny Jr.'s stardom, I mean, just exploded right before this movie came out. And then this movie came out, and it was kind of like, well... I guess we'll give you a pass because you gave us Iron Man. And I think some of that, too, was more of the comedy route then, not the superhero fans. The superhero fans all saw Iron Man. Mm -hmm. Then uh, some of the comedy people were all like, oh, yeah, he was in this, and he was actually really funny. Like Because I don't believe that Tropic Thunder was explosive at the box office. Like It was decent, but it wasn't like Iron Man, obviously. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that definitely that Iron Man kind of, propelled him because <laughs> it's an iron man so. yeah, yeah yeah we, we got it we got um, it yeah i don't remember where i was going with that but i think that kind of <laughs> you got you got tripped up, up by your yeah. own bun and you got i think people that really liked him as iron man that maybe didn't know much about robert downey jr before or all the other stuff that happened with him they saw him in iron man first and then went back and watched tropic thunder and was like oh this is funny mm-hmm. looking at it that way it's also worth mentioning with this movie, Tropic Thunder, it makes fun of a lot of stereotypes. Yes. It makes fun of the producer stereotype. It makes fun of the agent stereotype. It makes fun of just actors who go off the deep end. Arguably mm-hmm. enough, Robert Downey Jr. would fall into that yes. category as well. Yes, but it was, a, it was Jack Black kind of portraying that one and everything. Um, but it, it does, it makes fun of so many aspects of the industry. Yes. And Again, it's hard to define satire. I wish I can go more into detail into it, but it's it it's kind of one of those cop out answers. Whenever someone you, you hear it all the time, whenever someone kind of is offended by a thing or by a movie or something like that, the director or writer can go like, "Well, it's satire." It's like, "Well, it's hard to define satire, yeah. so it is kind of your cop out answer if you need it." Yeah. It's kind of your get out of jail free card sometimes. Yeah, and like good satire compared to poorly done satire is a huge difference yeah very big difference but like also going back to it like i think we'll talk about it later uh in some other films um if you do actually make fun of everybody then it's a lot more acceptable than if you're just making fun of one group Mm -hmm. if that makes sense like you have the actors the producers the directors you're making fun of everybody that's involved then it's a little different like tom cruise as the crazy exactly uh, exactly fantastic people didn't even know that that was tom cruise right away yes until the credits rolled some people didn't yeah that's like it's such a great movie uh, (laughs) moment there and everything but i don't know let's talk a little bit more about uh movies that maybe wouldn't be made today and uh, some good ones, we think. Um, we we were both kind of talking about this beforehand. We were looking through a whole bunch of other lists, other examples, movies that wouldn't be made today. I almost considered changing this topic up to being like, these people are wrong. These are movies that <laughs> could be, be ma- could yeah. be made today or have been made today yeah. or something like that. But no, yeah. we'll stick with the good ones. That's the point of the show. We want to talk about what we think are good ones. And I want to lead in with this one because it kind of goes into what you were talking about, how... Tropic Thunder kind of spread it out a little bit, making fun of of uh, uh, different stereotypes and everything, and uh, over actors and all that. 
I'm going to talk about 16 Candles here. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a certain aspect <laughs> that uh, I think is in this movie that I think a lot of people would say why it wouldn't be made today. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to get into it. But it, I think it is a perfect example of what you were kind of talking about where it's almost targeting. It's not, it, it's not laughing with... The, the the group of people that it's making fun of it's kind of pointing and laughing at yeah. it and making a joke about it and everything but darn it if molly ringwald doesn't just rope me into that movie and <laughs> if i just don't fall in love with her i love this movie because of her but then every time he the one character shows up and to no fault of his own he's yep. just acting it's not yep. his fault every time they do that i'm like why this is the <laughs> 80s we knew better yeah we just chose not to know better right yeah. I, don't, I, I I had to bring that one up because it, it's such a charming movie. I, she's yeah. so great and, in and that. It, and you talk about it, too. Like, it is a classic American movie. Mm -hmm. Everybody has this on some of their lists of top films and everything. Like, this is... And, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's hard to imagine. Like, uh, the same thing at the same point. It wasn't super controversial or you know it wasn't uh it, it flew under the radar at the time under the radar yeah and it's a classic yeah and yeah um but yeah to my last point to that is i don't care if it's someone else's wedding you remember your daughter's 16th <laughs> birthday come on justice for molly that was, i just felt so bad for her anyways you talk about classic american movies let's move into the next one here team america world police <laughs> scratch off your bingo cards this basically counts yes. as a uh, we talk about South Park. It's yeah. basically the same thing. Um, you want to talk about making fun of everyone. Everybody? <laughs> yeah. No one comes out unscathed from Team America World Police. Correct. Now, I would also argue one of the reasons why this movie would not be made today is because the creators of this movie said they will never do a movie like this again. Yeah. Because puppets are hard to control for a <laughs> full feature length movie. Yes. People. And they spent a lot of time. A lot of time with the puppets. I've seen some things that they're not easy to work with. Yeah. They're not yeah. easy we're to talking, work with. We're not talking like hand puppet like you could draw. We're talking like string like old marionette, like marionette puppets. Yep. Yeah. Those things are not easy to control. But that adds to the humor of the movie. It does. It but does. This makes fun of American patriotism. It makes fun of international terrorism. <laughs> At the same time. Yes. It's, um, it's kind of... Adult relationships it makes fun of, kind of. <laughs> yes. You know what just occurred to me that is kind of similar to this movie that we maybe should have put on here? You remember that movie, The Hunt, that came out a couple of years ago? Yes. Oh, the one. It, it's a movie that makes fun of both sides of the argument. Yeah. It says, look, you both have gone too far. No yep. one's right here. We're pointing it out by making fun of both sides here. Yes. And and I we should have had that. Well, yeah. we can talk about it still. It's, it's on the list now. Yeah, so with, uh, well, back with South Park, uh, the creators train, or Matt Parker and Trey Stone. Yeah. Matt, no. Matt, Stone, Matt Stone and Trey, and Trey Parker. Parker. Did I say that backwards? <laughs> I think you yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, great dudes. Just reverse that, yep. yep. But, like, even going into everything they do, whether it's South Park or some of the films they've worked on or even, like, the Book of Mormon, they can do a good job. They're one of the people I think that does a great job of satire. They're probably the best that I would if say anyone that, should define it. It should be them too, yeah, because they can make fun of everything, literally everything, religions, schools, people, how many celebrities have been on there? They're like either been on the show or made fun of on the show. Even in team America world police, yes. there's those whole celebrity coalition. <laughs> they make fun of celebrities in this too. Cause yeah. they're like all trying to help and everything, but it's like, you guys are just stroking your own egos here. Yeah. Yeah. Especially it's, especially Matt Demon. <laughs> Matt Demon. <laughs> yeah. Just it's great. It's great. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's take a quick minute here to talk about the Marshall Six Theater here in Marshall, Minnesota. We have entered the month of August, which means we still have one more good month of movies here to look forward to. Be sure to check out their website for showtimes for the biggest blockbusters. And also check out uh, maybe some past ones, uh, whether you want to watch them again or if you still need to catch up on a few. Be sure to check out their website for showtimes. Also, they are hiring, so make sure that if you're a high school school student or a returning college student and you need a little extra cash and want the opportunity to check out movies for free be sure to check that out here at the marshall six theater website here in marshall minnesota 
Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Yeah, we talked about Tropic Thunder. We talked about uh, some good and bad examples and everything like that. I don't know. Anything else you want to mention with this topic? No. I, I feel like we could go quite a few rounds. Yeah, there, there's, there's quite a few movies, but I think those are like some of our more favorite, better ones, I would say. I would say the, if you're going to take anything from this discussion, you can dislike movies for mm-hmm. the things they say and things they do. But I feel like the only way to properly do that is to actually sit down and watch it with at least somewhat of an open mind. Yep. Now, am I ever 100% uh, not guilty of that? No. Did I go in with an open mind during Fast X? <laughs> no. <laughs> but you get my point here. Yep. Yep. No, and I, th- I think, too, if, if you ever hear people talking, saying some movies uh, super controversial or you didn't like this take that they had or I, if you... If you'd like, I would suggest having an open mind and going watching it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't even have to like it when you get done. But actually watching it and taking your own opinion from it, that's what I think is more important with a lot of these films. I think we just healed America. I think we did it. Yep. Back we it did up, it. boys. We did it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on here with more discussion here. Let's talk about uh, the weekly preview. Go over some stuff that is premiering this weekend. We actually got quite a few things to talk about here, so let's get right into it. Yep. The Last Voyage of the Demeter, premiering Friday, August 11th. This is coming straight to theaters. Set almost entirely on an old-timey boat, the crew, the crew of the Demeter falls victim to one of its cargo boxes. It just so happens that they were transporting the one, the only, Dracula. Dracula. He escapes, he gets out, and uh, thus uh, bloodiness ensues. It's yeah. Dracula. That's um, what's going to happen. I remember watching the old like teaser trailer that had, um, I can't remember his name, but he's in Game of Thrones. Um, I think he might die pretty early because I don't think he was in this later trailer. <laughs> so that kind of made me sad. Yeah. But once I'm you pumped. start watching trailers as much as we have, you could kind of tell where movies yeah. are going. Yeah. It's a curse, but it's yeah. that we do that for you. Yep. Yes. Um, but yeah, a lot of classic horror movie tropes present in this movie, but I think with a more interesting twist. And a question I wanted to ask you, because you watch way more scary movies than I do. Mm-hmm. How many of them can you think of that take place on a boat? Not many. I mean, obviously there are some, um, especially like if you try to get into like the horror like sharks or mysteries of the deep, kind of those type films. Yeah, well, but like, even a lot of shark movies don't take place on a boat. Yeah. We just so, saw Meg 2 and half of that yeah. took place on land. That's true. Or on the ocean floor. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I. that's a good question. There's not a lot. Because the reason why I ask this is because, to me, this movie gets way scarier when it's on such an in- enclosed space like this. Yep. How many times do we see a movie where it's like they're trapped in the house? It's like, well, you're just not trying hard enough to get out of the house. Yep. There's an exit there. Here, you are you're, on a boat you can't. in the middle of the ocean in old-timey, like, London like we're not this is this is like huge pirates of the caribbean sailboat yeah. you can't communicate with people you are literally trapped there yeah. is no escape and it is you versus the monster and that the is thing it. is the monster gets out mm-hmm. but the you have to remember the monster has nowhere else to go the monster's yeah. not going in the water dracula is not swimming around there's and, no land and it's for a storm, storm out he can't yeah. fly away yeah and there's probably no land for thousands of miles and why would he miles. go? There's plenty There's, of food here. Yeah, he uh, he's got nothing to be afraid yeah. of. So it, he's it's the apex very, predator. Yeah, it's a very interesting. And talking about it, kind of like this, it reminds me of a little bit of the Hateful Eight, where they're all snowed in in the cabin, and one dude was uh, the bad guy, kind of waiting for his opportune time. Or a couple of them are the bad guys waiting for their opportune time. So minor spoiler the to yeah. the Hateful Eight. Yeah. It if came out like six it, years ago. Yeah, it's whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when you said you brought that up, that did kind of more of a. I'm just saying, I I feel like a lot of scary movies are missing this opportunity of truly finding a good setting where it's like, because even the Hateful Eight, yes, they're snowed in, but I mean, you can still kind of get out of the out. cabin. Yeah. I don't know. It's it, yeah. it's more of a controlled environment than on a boat in the middle of the ocean where you have. No escape. Yeah. I mean, you could jump out and try to swim your way home, but, but that's just, probably not going to work. The Meg will get you. The Meg will get you, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, so this, this scary movie does kind of intrigue me. 
Yeah. More than most do. Yep. More than Haunted Mansion? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that one wasn't too good. <laughs> uh, you'll notice I never number one recommended it after I saw it. So, uh, anyways. Uh, let's move on here. Also coming out this weekend, Jewels. Coming out to theaters as well. A charming sci-fi comedy about an alien who crash lands in an old man's backyard. Starring Ben Kingsley, he and his neighbors try their best to keep the alien a secret. When I say this movie looks charming, that's an understatement. Yep. It's going full charm with the full music, charm. the tone. Even I'm, the way the alien looks. Yeah. It, it reminds me of, I don't remember what film it was, but the alien looks very similar to the alien in this film, and it was a comedy. I'm trying was to Was it Paul? It might have been Paul. Because that remember. was the one I thought of, but that yeah. one was like a raunchy comedy. Yeah. That one was for like, te- like teenage college students. Yeah. This is... Paul for senior citizens. Yeah. And this is like aliens come crash land on earth. They don't want to take over the world. They want to sit on your couch and pet your cat and watch the evening news with you. That's what the, I get and, from and the not trailer. eat the cat. Like and not eat does. the cat. No, it just wants to pet the just, cat. Just yeah. is like, it's like car trouble for the alien. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, flat tire. Can I crash on your couch? Crash till, here for a little bit. Till alien triple a comes till, till my flex capacitor comes. I guess Alien AAA would be quadruple A because it'd be like AAA Ooh. and then the fourth A would be Alien. Alien, yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> Came up with that on the spot. <laughs> um, anything else you got to say about this movie? Not a lot Not really. to really go off with the trailer here. Yeah, Ben Kingsley looks like he's playing a good old man. He reminds me of like the Tom Hanks, uh, like when Tom Hanks played a man called Otto, mm-hmm. but not this being is gruffy old. Yeah, but, but yeah, this but is not like mean, but not mean. But like when he's as his nice sweet moments like that the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we talk a lot about movies on this channel, but sometimes the ones we talk about aren't the most accessible. That's where the Marshall Lyon County Library comes in handy. They have a great collection of physical media as well as a couple of online services with many many options for movies, TV shows, and documentaries. It's easy. Just get your own library card at the Marshall Lyon County Library and gain access to their large variety of movies, TV shows, and of course, books. Also, be sure to check back every month as we here at Popcorn Bucket List make specific movie recommendations based on a monthly theme. This month, we are tackling the best ever box office bombs. So head on over to the Marshall Lyon County Library for some of our favorites and check out the channel to get even more movie recommendations. And now, on with the show! Also coming out this weekend, Heart of Stone. This one's coming straight to Netflix. Gal Gadot stars in the next action thriller for Netflix that is trying really, really hard to basically be uh, Mission Impossible. Yep. Um, Gal Gadot has cameoed in three movies so far this year. It's about time she was in a starring role. Yes, yes. I I, I think she has the opportunity. Well, she is, but she also has the opportunity to take another franchise or lead character, hopefully for a couple of movies. And now obviously with you know with Wonder Woman and other things, she's an yeah, awesome. Break, breaking this last weekend, supposedly Wonder Woman three is now happening again. Yeah, I guess. So, so I don't know, was, but that was a pleasant surprise. I really like her as an action star. I think she'll be great. I think. Oh, yeah, she's good. good. It's it's the story around it, and it felt a little bit too much effect driven. Yes, and I don't know if that's this movie's fault. I think we're just so used to Tom Cruise doing the real stunts thing that it's kind of making it worse for all the yep. other movies. And when you have films like Oppenheimer. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just, like you have all these practical effects yeah. kind of things happening. It, it, it makes it harder for these other movies. Yep. But the plot rev- revolves around this computer chip called the heart. And this was the moment that I realized movies are getting super, super lazy with their tech MacGuffins. <laughs> like, it used to be before, like, in Fast and Furious, it was like, oh, God's eye. Like, it could do yeah. anything, but it was limited to just finding people. It was just yep. super NSA. Yep. Here, they, like, call this thing the heart, and it's just, it does everything. Does it everything. just does everything. It just does everything. It just can, they, yeah. it orchestras the world. I'm like, can we have a little direction here? <laughs> Or can the thing look at, I get it, technology is getting smaller by the day. Yeah. Can we have it be a little bit bigger Yeah. or have a little or, bit more or security? Have it, have it like the rock, like a <laughs> like glowing rock. Something. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. just, I don't, it, it just seems so lazy to me. Like it was just a computer yep. chip and they just called it the heart. And it was yep. like, we can do everything with this. It's like, 
just put a genie in it. Just put a genie in the movie. Yeah. That'll at least be more believable at yeah. this point. Just bring back Will Smith genie. I don't care. <laughs> I was to say go old old genie, but R.I.P. to yeah. Robin Williams. Yep. yep, not here. We'll settle for Will Smith as a genie. As long as he's not slapping people, we should be all right. <laughs> you took longer than I thought you would. <laughs> I was debating. I was like, should I make? Yeah, I'm gonna make it. It's been it's been a year. Chris Rock's <laughs> talked about it, so I can say it. It hasn't even been a year, has it? It's, <laughs> wait, no, we still got next. No, wait, have the, has it been a year? I thought it's been a year. Oh my god, it's been a year. Yeah, I think it's been a year. Right? What happened to time? I don't know. Have I been have I been around this one? Because yeah, did, what one did best, you freeze me? Well, what one best picture last year? I don't know, but I just I feel like I feel like it's or not been a year. off. I maybe feel like, I, maybe did, it hasn't been. A have year. we been in a coma and just no one told us? Because I don't feel like it's been a year. Google it, Google it. But it's been a. When did Will Smith Smith <laughs> slap Chris Rock? And it's gonna say the what ninety or ninety eighth Oscars or something. Watch this. It was like twenty nineteen. March 27th, 2022. It's been a year. Yeah, it has been a year. So, yeah, it's been over a year. Well, jokes totally acceptable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Also coming out this weekend, Love in Taipei. This one's coming to Paramount Plus. We don't see a lot of Paramount Plus here, nope. but uh, this one's uh, straight to that service. A teenage romantic comedy about an Asian American teen who was sent to Taipei, Taiwan for a summer program. The whole trip turns into more of a romantic getaway than an educational one. Yep. Um, I don't know. It looks good. Yeah, looks all I mean, right. It's got uh, one of the reasons from 13 Reasons Why. Um, I can't remember his name, but he's also the guy in Shazam. Uh, oh. Zach. Okay, now I uh, I think his yep. name's Zach. Now I can think of it, yep. yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe that could give you a reason to watch it, or maybe the reason you don't watch it. <laughs> Depending on how you feel about the 13 reasons. That's about all I got from this trailer. Uh, very uh, hunky-dory, lovey-dovey, teen comedy, rom-com vibes. Yeah. yeah. And the trailer was like five minutes long. It didn't need to be that long. Oh, yeah. Talk about a trailer that gave away everything. everything and just kept going and going. And going. Yeah. But that's yeah, right. You're right. Finally, coming out this weekend here, Red, White, and Royal Blue. This one's coming to Amazon Prime. After a potential international incident between the son of the President of the United States and the British Prince, the two are forced to reconcile to avoid any further international tensions via PR campaign. Plot twist, the two end up falling in love with each other. Yeah. I got to admit, that I did not see coming. That one was out of yeah, left field. It, it was. I I was. I didn't know. I think I was going like Zac Efron, like buddy cop, like yeah. fun kind of a thing. And then it was like, oh, no, this, this is a romantic Like it was going to be like the whole like international tensions thing. There had to be like some sort of bill or whatever yeah. sign. And the two leaders couldn't get it figured out. And the two guys were going to be like best friends forever. Yeah. Let's figure it out. Like, But no, it's like. No. They fall in love, dude. Yeah. And they, yeah. Like, so this could be the intro to how somebody would like to take over the world. You get two of the bigger superpowers, oh get my their God. kids to fall in love. I didn't even think of that. The world Never power know. dynamic here. Yeah. What happens? How does that work? I don't know. Someone who is like good at diplomatic stuff, let us know. Yeah. Figure it. Yeah. What happens? What there? would happen if the Prince of Britain married the like just any kid of the United States presidency. Yeah. I mean, I guess you just have to wait out the presidency's term in the monarchy. You kind of stick around a little bit. Yeah. Longer. So the monarchy, so they they'd get more, more, they'd get hit by that more. Yeah. I'm thinking about more than this, than the actual movie. So I think, I think if you are a rom-com person, this is a good weekend for you. You'll like it. Yeah. A great weekend for you. We got started two films. We started with Dracula. <laughs> and we ended with at least two oh, rom-coms. Horror is making a huge comeback this year. Yeah. And I love it. It really is. I it love it. It really, really is. Um, but yeah, that's everything coming out uh, this weekend here. Let's move on to number one recommends. I'm going to kick us off here. Um, I don't think I recommended this. I Maybe you did. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I finally had a chance to see Barbie. Ah. Um, I haven't recommended this before, have I? I don't think I did. I don't think so. Okay. Just making sure. I wasn't quite sure. I, I could have like gone back and fact checked it, but I was <laughs> too lazy. Yep. Anyways, yeah, I'm number one recommending Barbie here. Uh it, it checks all the boxes the movie wants to check off here, as far as I'm concerned. 
No, it is not a kid's movie. No. It is pretty hard PG-13. Yep. I don't know if I've ever used that before, but it is. <laughs> it's got a lot of great humor. It's got some very interesting visuals. It's got a very interesting combination of sometimes practical effects and sometimes a little bit cartoonish animation every once in a while. But the movie really does use a lot of practical effects, and I think that adds to the humor. If there's one thing I would say to go in as far as the mindset, there's one scene in particular. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's one scene in particular that reminded me of kind of the same vibe as the old Scooby-Doo cartoons. Okay. And what I mean by that is, yes, it is cartoonish. It is sort of childish, although a little bit more serious themes. But it is trying to teach a lesson underneath all that. What you got from the Scooby-Doo cartoons is basically don't trust anyone who's rich. That's pretty much all you had to learn. Or wears that. a mask. Or wears a mask. <laughs> uh, there's lessons to be learned here. Um, if we wanted to, we could talk about satire with this movie as well. Mm -hmm. But the movie is having fun with it. Mm -hmm. It's trying to teach a serious lesson, but having fun with it. And that's kind of the perfect vibe, I think, with those old Scooby-Doo cartoons where they're like running around and it's like serious, but like they're running into one door and running out. And it's, it's, it's a fun. It's fun. And that's yeah. what I had here. I had a lot of fun watching this movie. Uh, how about you? What do you got? Uh, what do you uh, recommend in here this week? So for this week, I have a kind of an out of the box pick. Uh, my wife and I we were just looking through stuff the other day, and she's been watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians, which is on Peacock. And what have they been adding or advertising a lot lately? Twisted Metal. And then when I remembered when she said, "Hey, we should watch this," see what do you think? I was stoked because I remember I played this video game. In I had not early, heard this was what, a video game, so like I'm glad early that you... Early 2000s, late 90s, this, it was PlayStation 2. So, <laughs> like, whatever... Way to, uh, way yeah. to date yourself there, yeah, Myerberg. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. But um, <laughs> I'd played this game, didn't play it a lot, um, but I played it and I knew some of, like, the... I don't want to say characters, but the characters in the game and what the imagery was. And so when I saw this and I saw Will Arnett was in it, I saw... <clears throat> Anthony uh, Mackie. Anthony Mackie was Stephanie in it. Beatrice. St yeah. And it was like, I'm we're gonna check this out. And I hadn't seen or heard anything probably for like four months or five months. And all of a sudden out of the blue we watched it. And um I really liked it. We're about halfway through. Uh and like you said, it's just fun. Uh Anthony Mackie's character is very much kind of what he was later in Cap or in uh when the winter soldier and the Falcon mm -hmm. where they're just like kind of buddy, buddy a little bit and kind of like, but very easy going, not as uptight, very easy and fun. Um, Will Arnett, it's just his voice. He plays the clown. It's fantastic. It's funny. Um, I really enjoyed it. Definitely give it a watch. If you got Peacock. Well, that's going to do it first here on this episode of popcorn bucket. Let's check out the Marshall six theater website for show times as we are still going through the summer movie season, as well as it is a place to pick up an application if you're looking for a job this fall. They That's are right. hiring. Also, be sure to let us know what you think of our display at the Marshall Lyon County Library and uh, check out our monthly recommends. For myself and Ryan Meyerberg, we'd like to thank you so much for watching, and we will see you at the movies.